Hi, I'm Nick Raboy from MongoDB. In this tutorial, we're going to see how to create indexes for MongoDB Atlas Search to provide relevant search results for our Atlas Search queries. Now, up on my screen, you'll notice that I have a collection open within the MongoDB Atlas dashboard. While just a single document isn't really enough to show the true value of Atlas Search, the complexity of the fields within this document is going to be great for this particular example because it'll show us a diverse set of index possibilities. Now, to run our Atlas search queries for this example, we're going to be using Visual Studio Code and the MongoDB Visual Studio Code extension. Feel free to use whatever you feel the most comfortable with when it comes to executing MongoDB Atlas search queries. So let's go ahead and open up Visual Studio Code. You'll notice that I have an aggregation already set up. This is going to be using the example database, and it's going to be using our Pokemon collection because the example here, we have a single document related to Pokemon. Now for the path, let's go ahead and provide a path. Right now we have none, we need one path. So I'm gonna say name is going to be the field that we're trying to search within. And we're gonna be searching for Pokemon. Now I'm gonna hit play. You'll notice that no results came back. So let's go back into our collection and let's see what we have for name. We don't have Pokemon for name, so let's go ahead and provide Pikachu instead. So that way we have a possibility of getting a match. So I'm gonna go back into my Visual Studio Code and I'm gonna swap this out with Pikachu. And just for the sake of matching, we're gonna say Pikachu with a capital P, even though it's not necessary. So I'm gonna hit play and you'll notice that no results came back. And the reason no results came back is because we don't have an index defined that represents this particular path but in addition, we actually don't have any index defined at all. So let's go ahead and create a new search index for this particular collection. So let's go ahead and say create search index. And for this example, we're not gonna be using the visual editor. We're gonna be using the JSON editor. And I'm gonna say next. Now this is what we get uh, by default. And what we could do is we could use this default index and it would work for us. So to break it down, what we're saying is we're saying that the mappings are dynamic true. So when we say dynamic mappings, what we're doing is we're saying that every single field within that document is going to be indexed. So that way, if we wanted to search against name or one of the other fields in the path, it would work. But let's go ahead and give it a try. So that way we can see what we're working with. So I'm going to say next, and we're going to say create search index. And it's going to take a few moments to create. So now we have our default index, which just has dynamic mappings as true. And it says one document is included in this index. So let's go ahead and go back into Visual Studio Code and see what results we get as of now. So when I hit run, this time around we get our document back because it found a match on Pikachu. And just for the sake of testing, we're going to change Pikachu to a lowercase p and search again. So you'll notice that we have results again. So let's go ahead and change the path. Let's go ahead and see what else we have as far as our fields go. So we're going to go back to collections and we're going to look at the other fields. So for the other fields, we have a Pokedex entry, which is an object. We have moves, which is an array of objects. And we have a location, which is going to be a geo coordinate. So GeoJSON, it's going to have a latitude and longitude. Let's go ahead and look at this Pokedex entry for red or yellow. So let's go ahead and do a search. So let's say that we want to search for Pokemon within this particular Pokedex entry and then red field. So let's go back into Visual Studio Code and let's change the path. So this time around, I'm gonna say Pokedex entry and I'm gonna use dot notation. So I'm gonna say red. So this is gonna look at the red field within the Pokedex entry object. And I'm gonna just leave it as Pikachu for now. Now you'll notice that no results came back for Pikachu because Pikachu wasn't referenced in that particular field. But if I switch it over to Pokemon, it comes up. Now, once again, we're using the default index for Atlas Search, and the default index says that our mappings is going to be dynamic true. And once again, like I said, when you have dynamic mappings true, what you're saying is you are indexing every single field within your documents. Now, there are pros and cons to doing this. One of the pros are that you don't need to have a rigid definition for your schema, your data model, etc. Instead, you can just create dynamic mappings and be able to search as necessary. While dynamic mappings are convenient, mapping every single field in a document, it comes at a cost. So indexes that are dynamically mapped tend to use more disk space and they may, under certain circumstances, be less performant. 
So what we can do instead is we could actually use static mappings within our index to define specifically which fields we want to be able to search on with Atlas Search. So let's go back into MongoDB Atlas. So this time around, let's go ahead and click on Search Indexes, and we're going to create a new index. Once again, we're going to use the JSON editor, and we're going to click Next. Now, for this particular index, let's go ahead and say that we want to call it Custom. The name does not really matter. It's just whatever makes the most sense to you. So rather than saying dynamic true, this is where we're going to customize what exactly we want to search against. So let's say that we only want to search against the name field. And while our document may be however large when it comes to the amount of fields that it has, we're only ever going to be able to search against the name field. So instead of dynamic mapping true, what we're going to do is we're going to say dynamic mapping is going to be false. And then we're going to specify the fields. So we're going to say fields. And the fields is an object. And this is where we get into the fields of the actual documents. So we want to index the name field. So we're going to say name. And name is going to be an object because we want to be able to specify, well, what type is this particular field? And what are the search options that we want to use? Now, for this particular tutorial, we're not going to get too invested in what the search options are. We only want to specify the type of field so that way we can search against it. So I'm going to say type, and the type is going to be a string. And I'm going to say next. And I'm going to create that search index. And it's going to take a few moments to create. All right, so the index is created. Let's go ahead and go back into Visual Studio Code. And let's go ahead and change some things around. So first of all, we're using a custom index at this point. We're not using the default index. So what we have to do is we have to specify the index that we want to use when using Atlas Search. So within our aggregation, within the search operator, what we can say is we can say index, and we called our index custom. So to start, let's go ahead and run our aggregation the way it was last time. So we're going to still search against the path, Pokedex entry, red, and we're going to search for Pokemon. Now remember, the last time we ran this, it returned results. So I'm going to hit play. And we have no results this time around. But let's go ahead and make a change. Let's go ahead and say that we want to query for Pikachu. And we want to change the path to be name. And we're going to hit play. And this time around, it returned results because name is within the index. And we have a document where the name is Pikachu. So let's go ahead and change some things around again. Let's go ahead and say that we want to index more fields within this particular collection. Let's go back into the MongoDB Atlas dashboard. And this time around, what we're going to do is we're going to change our index. So we're going to say edit, and we're going to edit with the JSON editor. So we have name being indexed. That's great. Let's go ahead and add to it. Let's say that we want to index the Pokedex entry. So we're going to add another field. So I'm going to say Pokedex entry. And this is an object, once again, so that way we can define the type and other information. But what we're going to say is we're going to say type. And Pokedex entry is actually an object. So because of that, we're going to say document. Now, this is where things can get a little interesting. So you can actually have dynamic mappings on certain fields, but not all fields within your search index. So for example, up at the top on line three, we said that we, we want the entire document to be dynamically mapped false. However, let's say that we want to add a dynamic mapping to all fields within the Pokedex entry object. We can do that like by doing this, dynamic true. Now what we can do is we can hit save. Once again, it may take a moment to update the index, but we have the name field within our index, and we have the Pokedex entry field within our index. And because the Pokedex entry field is dynamically mapped as true, that means that every single one of our subfields, so that would be red and yellow, would be included in something that we can search against. Now, if we tried to search against, say, moves or the location or something else, we wouldn't be able to do that because it's not part of our index. So let's go ahead and give it a try. So let's go ahead and go back into Visual Studio Code. And let's go ahead and run what we have previously. So what we have previously, it ran prior, but we're going to confirm. So we're going to hit play. Perfect. Let's go ahead and change our path. This time around, we're going to do an array instead of a string. So we're going to do our search within not only the name field, but also the Pokedex entry red. And we're going to do search. We still got results because we're searching for Pikachu. 
We're searching in either the name or the Pokedex entry. Pikachu does exist in the name. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change this to Pokemon and I am going to hit play. And we still have results because while Pokemon doesn't exist in the name field, it does exist in this red child field of Pokedex entry. So now we've slightly complicated what our index looks like for Atlas search. So let's go ahead and change that dynamic mapping to a static mapping. So let's go ahead and go back into the MongoDB Atlas dashboard. And let's go ahead and edit that index once more with the JSON editor. And instead of dynamic mapping true, we're going to say that this is going to be false. And let's go ahead and specify the fields that we want to map. So we're going to say fields. And we're going to say that this is an object. And we're going to say that we want to map yellow this time around. So for yellow, yellow is going to be a string. So type string. And if you wanted to, you could provide other search options as well. So you could specify the analyzer, you could specify other options as well, but that's out of the scope for this particular tutorial. Let's go ahead and save it. And then we're going to revisit our query as soon as it's done. All right, let's go back into Visual Studio Code. Let's take note of what exists in the yellow field. So I'm going to say monitor is going to be the, the keyword that we use here. But just for now, what I'm going to say is I'm going to say play. We got no results back because Pokemon does not exist in name. And even though that we've included Pokedex entry red in our path, we don't actually have that as far as our index goes. So let's go ahead and change this as yellow. If we were to run it, we'd get the same results, but let's go ahead and say monitor. And we're going to hit play. So we got results back because we found monitor inside of the Pokedex entry dot yellow subfield. Uh, it doesn't exist in name, but that's all right. So we have our static index for the name and the Pokedex entry yellow fields. So we're getting a little more specific in how we're defining our index. So let's go ahead and do a few more things. So that way you get an idea of how to create indexes within MongoDB in case you didn't want to use the dynamic mapping for all of your indexing scenarios. So let's go back into the MongoDB Atlas dashboard. Let's go ahead and say that we want to edit this index and we're going to say edit with JSON editor. This time around, let's static map every possible field within this particular document. So let's go ahead and, and start adding the rest. So we know that our fields for the Pokedex entry is also going to include a red. So let's go ahead and say red. Red is also a string. So it's going to be type string. And we're going to add a comma here. We have a location. So our location is going to be location. So this is on the parent level. So it's sitting alongside Pokedex entry and name, but we have location. The type this time around, because it's a latitude and longitude, it's GeoJSON. We're going to say Geo. So that way, if we wanted to do an Atlas search using a GeoJSON type search, we could. We also have a moves array and that moves array has objects. So let's go ahead and add those to our index as well. And it doesn't really matter where you add it within this particular index, it'll still get indexed. But let's go ahead and say moves. So for moves, we're going to treat it the same way that we treated our Pokedex entry object. So even though that it's an array, it's still going to be treated the same. And when we search against it, it'll also be treated the same in that sense. And we're going to see that in just a moment. But for moves, we're going to say that the type is going to be document. We're going to say that uh, it's going to be dynamic false. And we're going to say that it has fields. And the fields include the name and the description of the move. So we're going to say name is going to be type string. And then we have the description is also going to be of type string. So this should statically map every field within the documents of our collection. So let's go ahead and say save and give it a moment for that index to be created. So with the index created, let's go back into Visual Studio Code and modify our aggregation search query. So first of all, let's go ahead and hit play to see where we're where we stand currently. So we have results and it's using the custom index still. So let's go ahead and change the path. This time around the path, we're going to be searching for moves. And I'm going to be searching for paralysis. So to do that, what I can say is I can say moves dot description is going to be our path. 
and I'm going to search for paralysis. And I'm going to hit play. So you'll notice that we have a result back because even though we use dot notation and this is an array, we can still search within the fields of that object the same way that we search for fields within that Pokedex entry. Now, if I wanted to, I could provide an array for this path. It's totally up to you. I've decided that I only want to search for this particular set of fields within the path. It's totally up to you once again, uh, but it should give you an idea of what these indexes look like and the search queries that you can run around them. So once again, we got a gentle introduction to indexing for MongoDB Atlas search. We saw a few different scenarios using dynamic mappings and static mappings and kind of the trade-offs between the two, whereas dynamic mappings are convenient if you don't have a rigid defined schema for your collection, but it comes at the cost of your indexes might be a little larger in size, uh, they may be less performant, and then if you do know the fields that you want to search against within your collection. You could use a static mapping and define those fields one at a time. But at the end of the day, you could do a mix and match approach. You could use both static and dynamic mappings within your application and be perfectly fine. So it really depends on what you're after, but at least you should have a few ideas on how to actually create those indexes using the JSON editor within the MongoDB Atlas dashboard. If you want to find more tutorials on MongoDB Atlas search and other topics, go ahead and swing by our developer portal. So it's developer.mongodb.com and stop by the MongoDB community forums as well. So you, if you have a question, if you got stuck, go ahead and drop a new thread in there and somebody will pick it up. Until next time, happy programming everyone.